The BNTG. Those who control trade control the world. Level 58. Water Wonder. Survival Difficulty. Class 2. Unsafe. Secure. Low Entity Count. Description. Level 58 is an infinite indoor water park named Water Wonder. The park is separated into four variations of rooms. The water park, the corridors, the cafes, and the storerooms. Image caption. An image of level 58's starting point. The water parks. The water parks are the first area a wanderer will enter into. All wanderers seem to noclip into the same starting room, known as the main water park. Upon first glance, one will see plastic slides supported by beams coated in white chipped paint. Beyond this coat of paint are rusted metal supports, making these beams fragile and at risk of collapse. The slides themselves aren't in much better condition. Their colors are faded and pale, and when stepped on, the tube groans, warning the wanderer not to use it. All of these slides lead into fluidless, grimy pools. These pools are shallow, descending no further than 0.5 meters. Around the rims of pools are rows of blue tiles. The walls and floor of the pools are constructed with beige-colored concrete. Within the pools are collections of dry, red leaves, their origin unknown, as the level seemingly has no exterior. Windows, however, can be found, yet they see into a bright white void. Occasionally, window entities can be found in these windows, so keeping your distance is recommended. Surrounding the pool is a decorative environment containing plastic landscapes, trees, and boulders. The grass layering the terrain is blue, and the tree's leaves are a similar shade. Their bodies are various shades of dark brown, each painted uniquely. Currently, there have been no two trees found to have the same pattern. Upon these toy trees, a strange fruit has been discovered on the level, and is found nowhere else in the back rooms. See the section headed Tegan Fruit for more information. Walkways between these terrain chunks are paved with smooth concrete. These pathways lead to every slide, to small spectator areas, and to the corridors. The spectator areas aren't of much interest. They are comprised of picnic benches upon a flat sheet of blue plastic, proven to be the same one the grass is made from. Separating the spectator area from the pools and slides is a dense glass barrier. The glass is filthy and, in some instances, even cracked. The Corridors Image Caption A picture of a quote-unquote window entity in the corridors. The corridors, as the name implies, are a series of passageways between the other three room types. They are often dark, dingy, and drab due to there being minimal light sources. The light sources present consist of scarce ceiling lights, occasional lamps, or glowing white windows. Having rough gray concrete walls doesn't help the level as they absorb what little light meanders its way in. MDF, footnote, medium density fiberboard, and footnote, white painted tiles fill the ceiling, held up by plastic supports, quite similar to what the ceiling of a high school classroom might have looked like. The flooring in these hallways is made of metal plates, making it extremely noisy to walk around in the corridors. All of this noise can attract multiple species of entity residing within level 58. See section Entities for more info. Furnishings within the corridors include empty crates, occasionally on a trolley or just piled on top one another, lamps that are placed upon tables, usually they will be plugged in and powered, it is suggested that you turn any lamps you might find on. There's also step ladders, similar to the ones you may find shelf restockers using in a warehouse or storeroom, and different types of boards, pallets, or metal pipes. Image Caption A digital, color-coded map of the BNTG base. 
BNTG-based Tegan Fruit Fair Trade has secured a segment of the corridors. In certain corridors, the BNTG has built borders to keep out hostile entities. These structures are composed of a mix of the wooden boards, pallets, and pipes mentioned earlier. The secured section is displayed inside the digital map shown on screen. The color coding of the map is as follows. Black lines are representative of walls. Brown lines are representative of borders set up by the BNTG. Dark gray areas are representative of unsafe corridors. Light gray areas are representative of secured corridors. Green areas are representative of storerooms. Yellow areas are representative of cafes. Blue areas are representative of water parks. The cafes. Image caption. The first discovered cafe on level 58. The cafes play a large role in the sustainability of life on level 58, containing food, almond water, and other resources. These rooms are often dilapidated, dim, and damp needing a flashlight to view their interior. To enter a cafe, locate a deep brown wooden door with two grimy glass panels and a color-faded bell atop it. The cafe's interior consists of broken tables and chairs, with a counter somewhere within the room. Somewhere near the counter will be a damaged till, completely unlocked. Within the till, there normally are a variety of coins and notes all originating from different parts of the front rooms. Behind the counter, there's always one or two working vending machines. They have a digital touch screen rather than the regular glass panel. In a similar fashion to the rest of level 58, the touch screen doesn't function and is often cracked. A keypad on the side can still be used to type in an item's number, allowing wanderers to still be able to use these machines. Items stored within each vending machine are the exact same, never differentiating from the following list. Almond water. Unbranded crisps. Footnote. Coming in salt and vinegar, cheese and onion, prawn cocktail, sour cream, and ready salted. End footnote. Greasy marshmallows. And warp berries. The vending machines do not have any cost. However, they only hold 10 of each item at one time, restocking inconsistently. This can take anywhere from a few hours to one week. BNTG scientists have attempted to disassemble one of these machines in an attempt to see its inner workings. They discovered a lack of any interior parts, mechanics, or stock. The machine was essentially an empty metal husk. However, after the machine had been opened, it never restocked again. Walls within a cafe tend to be constructed out of concrete, similar to the corridors. In some cafes, these walls will be coated in a slate blue and light gray vertically striped wallpaper. Similarly, most cafes have concrete floors, yet some have black and white tiled flooring or polished wooden boards as floors. Occasionally, vines will have grown across the floor in the cafes, creating a tripping hazard. This phenomenon, however, is quite rare, with only three reported instances. The BNTG have attempted to reprise a cafe. See BNTG Base Tegan Fruit Fair Trade for more information. The Storerooms Image Caption A Small Looted Storeroom the storerooms are the most common of the three areas, being, on average, thrice as common as water parks. They are typically a large gray concrete room lit with loud fluorescent lights. Occasionally, these lights will go out for various periods of time, leaving any inhabitants in complete darkness. The longest one of these blackouts has lasted is around 5 hours and 20 minutes. The shortest lasted around 4 seconds. Inside these wide rooms are large shelves and racks, containing many varied materials and products. The most common and notable being supply crates, similar to those of level 1. These crates are easy to open, as their lids aren't sealed. 
Their contents include basic supplies such as almond water, Lucky O milk, greasy marshmallows, as well as other regular brand foods and beverages. A BNTG explorer managed to find Level 58's level key appearing as a large iron figurehead slide atop a small key that would seemingly be used in someone's front door. In one occasion, a box with the number 1 painted in red was found. When BNTG members attempted to open it, they got sucked into it, as if it were a black hole. The missing members were later found by an officer working for Meg Base Alpha. The group was completely unscathed. Aside from these cases, the other random assortment of items includes, but is not limited to, tanks of chlorine, toilet bowls, mattresses, spare chairs, and tables, unpowered vending machines, suitcases, tires, and even neatly folded football kits. The tribe of Tegan has utilized a lot of these objects to create their base within the level. For more information, see the tribe of Tegan. Tegan Fruit. Discovery. Hello everyone, Kian Bunray here. Me and my team have been sent to research any strange properties upon recently discovered level 58. Research team New Portal, led by myself, was exploring this labyrinth of hallways, defending ourselves from familiar foes. And then we heard shrieks in the distance. These caught us off guard. They were strangely human, yet sounded like a recording played through a speaker. Zane and Duncan, our team's non-scientist protectors, drew their blades, ready for combat. Cautiously, we navigated our way through the dark halls of Water Wonder until we saw the familiar sight of light. Others and myself thought we had wound up at the starting water park. Pushing open the heavy metal door, we entered. Immediately, we saw a group of what can only be described as human-sized dolls. They were not hostile and about as perplexed as us. From the back, a doll stepped forward. He greeted us in that same pre-recorded tone, stating that this level was their home. I was shook by its human-like movements, considering its plastic-coated body. Politely, I introduced our group as a team of researchers sent to document this level by the BNTG. Although their eyes were plastic, I could see the confused look staring back at me. Their leader then stated that they had never heard of the BNTG. I decided to shoot a shot and ask them for an interview. Cooperatively, they obliged. Telling me to follow them, I nervously started walking with Zane by my side. I knew if any of them attempted anything, he'd cav them up. Duncan remained with the rest of my team, who waited near the water park's entrance. We traveled through a built-up, refurbished water park. Large huts spanned the room. The pools clean and full. The slides had been scraped to make room for farming toy trees? While it was strange, I decided I'd ask in the interview. Myself and Zane entered the large building. There were multiple rooms, including a kitchen, living room, dining room, and a pool room. I looked around, astonished by the creative architecture of the dolls. We walked into a small room. There were two chairs and a table. Myself and the doll sat down. I pulled out my audio recorder, explaining I'd tape the interview for research purposes. It should be noted that this interview has been translated from Welsh. Kian laid the tape recorder down on the makeshift wooden table. Once the on button was pressed, Kian began. Tape start. Good afternoon. Could you please introduce yourselves? My name is Rias Morris. Nice to meet you, Rias. I'm here to ask a few questions about yourself and your community. Is that okay with you? Kian pulls out a small yellow notebook and begins writing. What is okay? Oh, um, it means fine. Taken aback by the lack of knowledge, Kian hastily jots some points down within his notebook. Do I have permission to ask about you and your community? Yes, what are your questions? What do you call yourselves, and how many people live here? We are the tribe of Tegan. There are 47 of us, yet there once was 50. How long have you lived here for? Our tribe has lived here for many harvests, since the skies no longer turned dark. What do you mean by the skies no longer turned dark? Before we were sent here by Tegan, the skies changed from blue to dark. 
When we arrived here, we could only keep time by counting the harvest. Could you explain more about Tegan? Tegan is the one whom saves. He is the one whom protects. The one whom blesses our lands. We might not but serve him as our lord. We shall prepare his sacrifices. For this, he shall save us, bless us, and protect us from the demons. Kian seems to be concerned. How do you serve him and what do you mean by demons? We fear the ones whom smile. We fight the ones whom have long arms. We sacrifice Tegan fruit to our master. He shall save us for this deed. What is Tegan fruit? The Lord's fruit. Rius hands Kian a purple paper cutout of some sort of berry. Zane glances at Rias, concerned he might try something. Interesting. How do you get Tegan fruit? The fruit from the trees made of blue produce the fruit. These magic trees summon the Lord's fruit. Once they are ripe, we take them and perform the harvest. Wait, it just happens? The Lord has brought it to us. Interesting. Kian flips the page and continues scribbling notes in his page. One last question. How did you get here? The Lord challenged us. The yellow world has shown. The red path, the blue path. We traveled the red path and ended up in our gray world. Strange. Well, thank you for your time today. Could I please have a piece of Tegan fruit for myself? Rias nods. Kian quickly packs up his stuff and follows behind him. Tape end. Image caption. Some Tegan fruit on a BNTG lab table. Tegan fruit appears as a strange type of berry resembling something similar to a large black currant. They have a plastic-like texture and are around the size of a lemon. They have a purple exterior. However, once sliced open, a dull yellow interior is revealed. Despite being made of plastic, Tegan fruit is easy to bite into and chew, having the same soft form as a banana. The taste of these berries is often defined as mild, sour mint. Tegan trees are used to grow Tegan fruit, only appearing in the water parks of level 58. Tegan trees don't have a growth process. Instead, they randomly shoot out of flatter areas of plastic terrain in unoccupied and uncluttered locations. The tribe of Tegan have taken advantage of this to create Tegan fruit farms by flattening areas for more to appear. This peculiar fruit displays special properties. When eaten, it provides the body with many minerals, the main ones being iron, vitamin D, vitamin C, magnesium, and calcium. However, this fruit seems to decrease the zinc levels within the bloodstream, negatively affecting the reproductive system. The fruit seems to make your skin become plasticky and doll-like. Its consumer will look smooth and polished if too much is consumed. This effect doesn't negatively affect your movement or agility. Instead, it provides a defensive layer that can be used to your advantage. This doll-like effect seems to prevent aging, as if its consumers were truly plastic. For this purpose, the BNTG have taken an interest in the unusual fruit, claiming it as their own and trading it for other resources with their allies. Tegan fruit has four stages of growth. Seemingly, they switch from one stage to another without any growth process. Stage 1. Sprouting the first stage of a Tegan fruit's life is sprouting. During this stage, lasting approximately six days, the fruit will appear as a small green leaf hanging from the blue leaves of the Tegan trees. In this stage, the berry is inedible. If eaten before stage three, it can cause illness. Stage two, pink berries. Stage two brings a whole new appearance to the before green leaf. In the second stage, Tegan fruit takes the form of a pink-black currant, with blue leaves and a brown stalk connecting it to the tree. This stage lasts 11 days. Stage 3. Ripe Berries Within stage 3, the berries will gain their purple coloring. At this point, the plant is fully mature and juicy. This stage is when the previously defined effects start working, such as the plastic-like skin being given to consumers. This is also when harvest takes place. This stage typically lasts seven days. Stage four, 
elderberries. The fourth and final stage brings changed properties to this otherwise useful fruit. The effects are reversed, making one seem old and wrinkled. Berries in this stage will make consumers ill and weaken their bone structure. However, in small dosages, they can reverse the effects of stage 3 berries. This stage lasts until the berries are picked. Entities As of current, there are only three discovered entities within level 58. These entities are Smilers, Dollars, and, while rare, Windows. Entities are only known to wander the corridors, except for one wretch that has been created inside of a water park. The story behind the wretch is that one of the tribe's members had an almond allergy. Due to the effects of the backrooms, they slowly went insane, becoming a wretch. The tribe of Tegan quickly dispatched of the entity, labeling the unfortunate soul a demon. Bases, Outposts, and Communities BNTG based Tegan Fruit Fair Trade Tegan Fruit Fair Trade is a BNTG base originally set up after research team New Portal deemed the level a good resource farm. Following Kian's expedition, a higher-up sent multiple teams to start reconstructing level 58. The map presented earlier displays the progress made by the teams. Once level 58 could house a whole expedition, a population of 50 BNTG workers moved in. They both live and work within the level and have become good friends with their neighbors, the tribe of Tegan. The corridors secured by the BNTG led to multiple ROIs footnote, rooms of interest, and footnote, around level 58. These include a secured pathway to the tribe's base, the starting water park, as well as the following locations. Camp Tegan. There is currently one cafe within the BNTG base. It has been successfully restored, finished with a wooden covering over the walls and fresh wooden boards as flooring. This small ROI has an old western feel to it. It seems more like a saloon than a cafe in appearance, yet it is quite possibly one of the friendliest establishments in the back rooms. Due to the near-infinite food and drink provided by the vending machines, multiple more have been transported from other cafes to Camp Tegan. This leaves the pleasant place without the need for waiters or cooks. Storage Facility 058-1 Storage Facility 058-1 is a rebuilt storeroom dedicated to holding mass amounts of Tegan fruit grown by the BNTG. Whilst they do have their other regular trade products stored here, the amount will never compare to that of the strange fruits. The facility itself was quickly cleared out by a BNTG team, and its old wares were added to the market. Once all of the cluster was out of the way, new shelves replaced the old rusted ones, and the supply crates were repurposed to hold new wares. The floor was covered over with Valencia vinyl sheets, similar to the floors within a school's science lab. The walls were cleaned up, but other than that, there were no changes to them. Tegan Fruit Farm The Tegan Fruit Farm is a storeroom remodeled into an agricultural patch, containing as many Tegan trees as possible. This area is heavily guarded by the BNTG, not allowing anyone who doesn't work for them to enter. Due to this secrecy, there exists little information on how the farm functions, nor how many people work there. It is speculated that every harvest, the BNTG manages to produce just over 4,500 berries through large flat areas of the blue plastic grass. The vast majority are bought up almost instantly by some communities. They have become a popular treat sold by Tom's Diner in Level 1. The Bunk Room once again, a repurposed storeroom is being used as a barracks of sorts, containing many green quilted bunk beds where the population of the base resides. The storeroom is neatly done up with slate blue and cyan striped wallpaper and a cushiony light gray carpeted floor. Similarly to storage facility 058-1, all of the original resources residing within this warehouse were listed to the market and sold. Each employee has their own personal locker in the corridors outside of the room. These lockers continue on down the corridors, similar to a middle school's. Security cameras watch over these lockers. 
thieves are arrested and persecuted. Where they are taken isn't publicly disclosed for safeguarding reasons. The Tribe of Tegan The Tribe of Tegan is a community of around 50 members that resides on level 58. They have built themselves a small town within an abandoned water park, with huts, farms, and an infinite source of water. This community thrives off of Tegan fruit and almond water. Those who are part of this tribe seem primitive, as if a whole group of Neanderthals no-clipped all at once. They possess no knowledge of current GOIs, such as the MEG or the BNTG. In a similar fashion, they have never heard about technology or science, blaming the technology they've seen on magic and Tegan. On the other hand, completely contradictory to their primitive behavior, they appear almost plastic, similar to dolls. Their voices echo, sounding like they are speaking through a microphone. They communicate in Old English and don't understand modern terms. Residents of the tribe seem to have developed their own culture, folklores, tales, and god. Their primary belief is that they were brought here by a god named Tegan. Tegan is a name of Welsh origin, with its etymology meaning loved one. In modern Welsh, the word translates to toy. The group believes that the water park they have made residency in is a safe haven from Gwen Far, translating to Big Smile, and Breach Here, translating to Long Arm. Footnote, this is likely a reference to dolers within the level. End footnote. Culture. Throughout the years of being trapped upon level 58, the tribe of Tegan has developed its own festivals, daily rituals, and prayer routines they stick to. They base the timing of these events around the growth time of Tegan fruit. Harvest The harvest is a special event taking place once every 30 days. In this event, Tegan fruit is ripe. All of the males in the tribe harvest as much fruit as possible so the next set can begin growing. Once the fruit has been picked, the males will take them back to the town center where they will begin to wash and prepare the fruit. Whilst the male members are doing this, women and children decorate their town with pink and purple decorations, handcrafted with colored paper or card likely found in the storerooms. Decorations put up for this event include life-sized models of Tegan trees, melon-sized cutouts of Tegan fruit, these are often stuck to buildings, around doorways, and windows. Another decoration is stripes of pink and purple paper hung from a string across streets, walls, and fences. These are similar in appearance to party flags from the front rooms. Once all of the fruit is prepared and the decor is set, the entirety of the tribe will meet around a table inside of the town hall. The town chief will present the Tegan fruit upon the table. It is then blessed before continuing on a prayer. A member of Kian's team recorded the prayer during the event. The transcript below has been translated from Welsh. Dear Tegan, our Lord, we offer you ourselves. We offer you our bodies. We offer you our minds. Please may you bless us this fruit to keep us fed. Please may you bless us ourselves to keep us safe. Please may you bless us this land to keep providing for us. In your name we thank. In your name we praise. In your name we love. In your name we save. We thank you, Lord, for our water. We thank you, Lord, for our food. We thank you, Lord, for our shelter. It is our honor to serve. Duweed. Once the group has finished praying, one by one, members will approach the table where they will be greeted, blessed, and given a slice of fruit by their leader. Leftover Tegan fruit is placed in the community bank. See Architecture for more information. For the rest of the day, they celebrate and dance rather than doing regular chores. They play tunes using handmade percussion instruments, played by five dedicated members of the community. On the day after the festival, the tribe of Tegan began to take down decorations. Once this is done, the tribe moves on with their day, continuing regular chores as per usual. The Fallen In the event a member of this community passes or is lost, 
a large funeral-like ceremony will be held, honoring the one who has passed on. This event cannot take place on the same day as harvest. If someone dies during harvest, their fallen ceremony will be held the day afterwards. If the case is somebody has died and the body is retrieved, a group of tribe members will start preparing the body. They wash it in almond water, then spray the body with various cleansing products and air fresheners, often found within the storerooms. Once the body has been prepared, they will carry it out into the corridors. They will turn off all light and start chanting for a beast to come, believing that once an entity has consumed the body, the soul of the fallen will live on inside them. When an entity arrives at the scene, the tribe of Tegan will not watch the body be consumed by the entity. Rather, they back away, singing songs of gratitude and forgiveness to Tegan. In cases where the body isn't retrieved, they will offer 10 Tegan fruit to the entity instead. Architecture The buildings formed by the tribe are quite spectacular, exhibiting strange ways of weaving and mixing parts to create structures. The reasoning behind this strange architecture is speculated to be that the tribe didn't understand how to use a hammer and nail, or simply didn't have one available. As a result, they used more primitive joints within the five current structures. These include pipe joints, a joint used to connect corners of a building, wall joints, a joint used to hold a wall together, and roof joints, used to create and support flat roofs. Houses Houses are the most common structure, with there being ten in the village. These house between four and six people per one. There are small shacks made from the pallets, pipes, MDF boards, and regular plastic sheets around the level. They are all flat-roofed and quite messy in structure, similar to an old, decrepit shed. These structures are surprisingly sturdy for what they're made from, as there is no known instance of collapse. The interior of these buildings has four rooms, the kitchen, the living room, the bedroom, and the pantry. The bedroom is the largest of the rooms, and is featured at the back of the house. It contains multiple old mattresses laid on the floor, likely stolen from a storeroom, and a support beam going down the center to hold the ceiling in place. The living room is slightly smaller in size than the bedroom, and is the first room you enter through. It consists of a few seats, likely from the cafes, and two crates in the middle used as a table. The living room is a sort of hub, connecting all of the previously mentioned rooms. A home's kitchen is a small room, containing cupboards, usually used to store almond water, and a sink. The furniture within the room is pirated from storage rooms. This can be inferred from the well-structured cupboards and the sinks being made of brand new empty toilet bowls. The pantry is a small room, functioning only to hold a Tegan fruit for the household. Crop Beds The crop beds have two variations, the first only being featured once. Variation 1 is a repurposed spectator area with the benches and glass border removed. This allows the Tegan trees to sprout out of the blue plastic sheet used as flooring. Design 2 consists of the plastic terrain and the tubes from the removed water slides. This design is far more frequent, having four instances. The plastic landscape has been leveled. This was a necessary step for the building of the village as a whole. And around certain areas, semicircular slides were used as a crop bed trim dedicating the area to Tegan trees and Tegan trees only. The food banks. Food banks are essentially community pantries. They are small buildings, no bigger than your average garden shed, with no interior furnishings. They are structured using double-stacked pallets as walls, connected by wall and corner joints. Similarly to all other buildings, the roof is flat and relies on support from roof joints. When the tribe arrives back after a supply run, all of the food they have collected will be stored in here. Almond water, on the other hand, will be poured into the water park's pools, creating an infinite source for them to drink from. Community members are free to take food from the pantries or pools at any point. The Town Center The Town Center is a unique building, only being featured once. It is constructed similarly to houses, 
the exception being it's twice the size. The town center consists of eight rooms. The living room is a large room. It has four supports holding the ceiling up due to its size. The contents of the room include multiple picnic tables taken from the spectators areas, arranged in such a way that it forms a sort of canteen-like area. When community members aren't doing their usual chores, they often lounge within this room, using it as a communal meeting space. The kitchen is directly connected to the pantry, the bin, and the living room. There isn't much difference to this kitchen from the ones that are in regular houses. The only differences being the size and the fact that it has four sinks rather than one. The pantry is the exact same as those within normal houses. The worship room is a space directly affront the wanderer when entering the town center. It appears as a poorly crafted room with a singular pool table in the center. Upon this table aren't balls, but rather an abundance of Tegan fruit, surrounded by candles. Members of the tribe of Tegan come in here throughout the day to say prayers to Tegan. The bedroom is a small room. It contains crates of the leader's possessions, with a solitary mattress at the back of the room. Other than this, there isn't much to note about this room. The Room of Justice is where those who have done wrong to the tribe are interrogated by the tribe's leader, Rias Morris. If the person doesn't have a reason for their actions, they will be locked in the cell until Rias sees fit. The room itself is dimly lit and contains only a table and two chairs on opposite sides. At the back of the room is the cell to enter the room. Take the first door on the right after entering the town center. The cell is a small room where prisoners are trapped. Each day one of them is there, they will be provided with the brandless crisps and almond water. A person within the cell is deemed unworthy to eat the holy fruit. The cell has only ever been used once. Rias locked up two of the tribe's members away for three harvests for effectively murdering a young boy. The bin is tucked away behind the kitchen. Any scrap of resources are thrown into it and seemingly disappear. The bin isn't technically a room itself, but rather a black water slide built into the back of the kitchen. One fateful day, two tribe members pushed one of the youth of the tribe down the slide. The young boy was never seen again. Entrances and Exits Entrances No clipping into a plastic pipe on level 37 will take you to level 58. This entry is rare and will only present itself to groups of at least three wanderers. Unlocking any door using level 58's level key will lead here. The key appears as a large, rusted iron slide with the number 58 coming out of the bottom of the tube. Below the ladder lies the actual key part, which is quite small compared to its oversized figurehead. The smaller part will easily fit into most locks. Finding an old flyer advertising Water Wonder on level 9 and tearing it will lead here. These flyers can be found taped to lamp posts, on tables inside houses, or shoved inside bins around the level. Rumor has it that you can arrive at level 58 through multicolored slides within level 0. However, this is unconfirmed. Exits No clipping into a black water slide will lead to level 58.1. This method of exit isn't recommended due to level 58.1 being class 5 in difficulty. Opening a supply crate with a red number 1 painted onto it will send you to level 1. No clipping into the exposed piping in the corridors will lead you to office space EL3A.